Jackie Mosney here with Dan Ariely for the Socialized Meetup event. Looking forward to the Socialized 14 Summit that he will be hosting this week here in Israel. Dan, how is your uh, speech right now with the group? Um, you know, it's, it's, it's hard for me to say. Uh, I think it was uh, interesting. People asked very interesting questions. I tried my best to give uh, useful answers. Great. I think we had the... Uh, it felt, uh, despite the fact that there were many people, I th at least to me it felt warm and friendly and uh, as if we were sitting in a living room, so it was very nice. Wonderful. Um, I think everyone really enjoyed the anecdotes that you were giving and I'm wondering how is this event going to be different from the main event coming up next week? The socialized uh, event on, uh, next week is actually uh, much more organized and curated. Uh, people have specific topics they're going to talk about, they're going to build on each other. This was really kind of uh, my, my random journey and the audience random uh, journey. And you know, there's something very wonderful about being part of something that is happening at the moment, but at the same time, it's uh, less educational. So the, the main event is much more uh, curated and everybody has uh, time on stage, thinking about what they want to deliver and trying to do something cohesive across the day. Wonderful. And how have you felt about the hype of you being out here in Israel? I know a lot of people are like, oh my gosh, he's a rock star, he's here, he's visiting, he's back home. Do you feel this? Do you feel this kind of level of popularity and excitement around you? Is it similar in the U.S.? Is it different in the U.S.? I basically think that people like the ideas. Um, you know, there's lots of wonderful research in social science. Sometimes I talk about my own research, sometimes I talk about other people's ideas, but in general, I think the excitement really is about a, a new type of perspective. I think people are, especially after 2007, 2008, people are kind of uh, unhappy with the standard economic theory, looking for something else, something that could explain what we're doing and also want some help and figure out the next step. So I don't think it's so much me. It's true, I, I talk about these things, but I think the reality is that the excitement is about the research itself rather than, uh, than me. So. Um, I'm kind of, I, I look at my role sometimes as a, um, helping people navigate this world, but, but it's really a fascinating world that people are excited about. And do you think your research uh, crosses cultures? Do you think that if your studies are coming from America, that they're applicable here? Is the same predictable, irrational behavior consistent over different cultures? Is it really just for the developed world? Do you think if you went to parts of Asia or South America or even here in Israel, the same holds true? So, so I think it's a question of uh, the details of the behavior. So if you think about something like visual illusions, we're all the same everywhere. If you think about basic decision making, we're the same everywhere. The moment you start thinking about more abstract and nuanced uh, decision, then we can become uh, different from each other. So if you think about something like the sense of revenge uh, that people have, uh, men and women are very similar in having an overall sense of revenge if somebody wronged us, but it turns out that men and women pick different approaches to try and teach the other person a lesson. So there is, there is a similarity at the base level that is very high, but as you get to things that are more and more distant from like basic decision making, there is more room for uh, cultural and gender variation. Can you think of any examples now that it might differ even between the US and Israel or cultural differences that you see between the two in this way? So, um, you know, uh, as an Israeli, I would say that one of the big differences is that Israelis are much more open about expressing their opinion and especially uh, telling the other person that they're wrong. Uh, we, we have I remember when I was in the PhD program, there were three Israelis and we were in this class and we would just stand up in the middle of the class and point to the professor and shake our hands and the rest of the students in the first class thought we were going to kill each other. They thought we hated each other. But for us, this was the, this is the way you discuss. You look at TV here, people just don't let each other finish sentences. They um, really, really fight. Uh, that's a big difference. By the way, I, I've, I've been, I learned how to use this for my benefit. So when I go to faculty meetings and I disagree with people, I say, look, just to be clear, I'm Israeli. We have a culture where people just are blunt and say what they want, and then I can go ahead and be blunt, and they blame my culture rather than me, and it's working very well for me. Wonderful. And how do you think Israeli companies can benefit uh, from, what, from your research and what you're doing? I know that over the next week, you're going to be working very closely with Israeli companies, a lot of startups. Startups are already taking what you're learning and incorporating into how to work with their consumers and how to work in their offices. What's a strong example that you've seen or have people really reached out to you from around the world asking for your help? So uh, th there's lots of questions. We've been doing this for a long, 
for a long time uh, for both small and large companies. Um, look, if you're designing something like a new type of uh, shatterproof glass or anti-lock brakes, I can't help you. This is not my, or new cloud computing, you know, I, I can't help you with that. But if you do something that has to do with human nature, um, you're trying to get people to behave differently, think about it differently, all of a sudden there's value in understanding what people actually, actually do. So I'll give you one example. Um, this is a company uh, that basically uh, tries to get people to sign up to be drivers in particular hours of the day. Uh, so think about something like a car service, and everybody wants to get car service Friday night, Saturday night, but the people who are giving this service want to stay home that night or want to do something themselves. They don't necessarily want to sign up. And, and what we did was we changed the framing of how people sign up. So, uh, for example, one, one of the things we did was we showed people how much money they could make on Friday night and how much money they could make not on Friday night. So imagine, for example, on Friday night you could make $50 and on other nights, you, on non-Friday night, you would make $30 per hour. One way to show it is to say 50 versus 30. Another way to show it is to say compared to the average. If the average is 40, now this is 10 plus and this is 10 minus. We've played with all kinds of techniques to try and get people to think very carefully about the desirability of the high likelihood hour. It turns out that this approach of saying plus 10, minus 10 was incredibly effective because it shows you that there's a gap and it uses loss aversion as a principle and people do sign up in a better way to get services. So there's lots of examples like this when you say you want to get people to behave in a different way but what do you really understand about motivation of human behavior. If you understand them better, you might be able to apply your levers in a more effective way. Great. And um, back to the Socialize event, I'm wondering why Socialize? Why do you decide to pair up with them? What, I guess, is your incentive on this? And how do you think the community is going to feel about it with you coming here and sharing your knowledge? I know tonight was a pack night and that should give a good clue. So, so I think that, uh, you know, Karen did a great job uh, creating this organization. I think it is, has a a wonderful mission. Uh, I think the events are well organized and executed and I think people are learning a lot in a very short time. Um, you know, I, I would like everybody to take more classes at the university, but I understand this is incredibly impractical. So the question is, uh, what, how do you go around uh, the academic life and how do you pick the things that you think are relevant uh, for those people? And that's what uh, Karen is doing as a curator uh, of these events. And I think it's uh, incredibly valuable to go for one day and get um, small pieces of information that could be relevant to to many people and I'm um, very happy to uh, play a small part in this. Are you on, you said uh, people should go to more classes, are you on Coursera or Khan Economy? Have you thought about it? Are you going to be? I'd love to see a class of yours. Uh, so I, I, I have a class on Coursera. Um, it's a, it, we, can, we can go to long discussions. We, we taught it twice. Uh, it was a incredibly uh, time-consuming but rewarding activity. Um, uh, I think we had students from every country in the world. It was really amazing to see 190 some uh, uh, countries and how people, students worked together and collaborated. Um, it also taught me some of the complexities and nuances and the challenges in online education. Um, but it's certainly a, an important domain that we should explore more of. But uh, by the way, it's not easy. It's not easy to uh, create the commitment and agree to do all of that. So it's, it's going to appeal at the end of the day to people who do have time. And the startups that Karen is trying to uh, appeal to uh, are not in that category of people who have, um, let's say, 15 hours a week for 10 weeks to give to something. Well, thank you so much. I'm here with Dan Ariely in Tel Aviv kicking off the Socialized 14 Summit event. <laughs>